One, two, three, four, five. It's the Naylor way. One, two, three, four, five. It's the Naylor way. One, two, three, four, five. It's the Naylor way. One, two, three, four, five. It's a little different around these parts. Clearly, we're not in Inglewood. Nah, nah, we Where are we, babe? We're, we're, we're in Dallas, Texas, y'all. You got it. Yep. California's on a stay-at-home order, and we decided we got to get out the house. The kids yeah. are going stir crazy. They ready to get out the house. And when you come to Texas, all things are bigger in Texas. They are. So we came to our parents' house. We're so excited. They have pools. They have not, not, players. Not plural. She didn't, they don't have two They vehicles. got a pool they and a, pool. a hot but she said so that's pools. the same thing. She that's said, two. Okay. Taylor, they got two bodies of water. We got that you movies. Can see in. We got movie theaters. I didn't put Girl. that. I didn't put an S on you that. Did. You, you did. absolutely did. It's okay though. They do have a so, media room and a game room, so I guess I can they're both. It's gonna media. count. No. But regardless of the fact yeah, that we're in You are the gasser though. You are the gasser. I am. So how long was our trip? trip? How long was our trip? Can you tell me how many miles it was? Can you tell me how many miles it was in, in the Kayla way? How long was our drive? Huh? Throw out how many hours it was, Kayla. 10,000. 10,000 hours. So, it took us 10,000 hours to get here, but we made it. Okay? We made it. We made it. I don't like long road trips, I love however. I love we're here. I okay? love them. I grew yeah. up on long road trips, so there ain't nothing wrong with that. I didn't. I didn't go anywhere. Okay? Don't I went to Cedar Point. Don't I went to that. Washington, D.C. No, you decided. And you you turned it. down. Going Texas, to Kirbyville, true. Texas. That's it her fault. in the country. But it was so much going on. Okay, we're sidetracked. Okay. Um, Needless to say, we got our family, we packed up, and we came to Texas. We had a fun road trip. We did. We spent a lot of good time talking, and we're going to let you guys into some of our good discussions. Yeah. So take a look. This. Back to the devotional. It said, focus on right where I have you now. Yeah. So when you recap, let, just using this tour experience, where he had you in that moment, you were had been successful on your last date. The next date was in the future, it hadn't come. So if you were sitting in where you are today, not worrying about what's on the horizon, but just worrying about where God has you right now in the relationship you know, that you have with your father right now in the moment, then you end up recapping what you just said. Yeah. You end up recapping, God is for me. Yeah. If I never went on another tour date, he's been good to me. Because what I just did isn't something that's just for everybody. I was selected. I was specially picked out. Even if he was just doing it for one tour, two tours. Who said it was going to be ten tours? What happened for your preparation yeah. for the season? It freed me. Like, it absolutely freed me to just walk in confidence walk in you know knowing that i have a gift and whether i go and i'm hosting for her or not i realize that i have this gift and it allowed me to be free and free my mind from thinking about whether or not i was going to get chosen from for the tour and focus more about being the best host i could be so i was able to just free my mind from the actual like you know, positioning and focus more on honing in on my craft and doing the best I can do. Like, so, so let me ask you, with, with it in re, in hindsight, looking at the same situation, and even if, because I want to talk about like, once you can start being grateful. So even if, because this is this is where it has to be. It's one thing to tell yourself you're being ridiculous. There's no reason why they would be thinking that because the last thing you told you okay so those are what you tell yourself so you can like kind of snap out of it right but what if because at the end of the day it could be the last tour day right it could have been the last tour day so what do you tell yourself as far as it being okay god whatever you have in my life if i'm going or not i'm st i've still been blessed yes and that's the thing like just knowing that he's always for me so whatever he presents, it's like, okay, if one door closes, then I already am in expectation that another one is open. And that's all about heart posture. Like if I know that I'm being the best person I can be and I'm putting my best foot forward, then I know that he's going to take up the rest of the space. So whether I get 
a hosting job or whether I'm at the school or whatever I'm doing, I'm just trusting that God is in front of me, that he's went before me. And whatever the situation is, he has it worked out. Like 1000%. That is literally what I believe. It's not so, like something I try to compare. See how we almost can get greedy in the moment? Like it's something that God didn't even have to grant us the opportunity to ever experience it. But then after we experience it, we start saying, man, why not another one and another one? And what if he said, I only needed you to do that one because we're moving on to the next thing. You know what I'm saying? So it's like when you thought about that, then in that moment you said, dang, I'm actually now qualified. Now I actually got a resume builder. So even if you were releasing me, God, into my destiny, you've prepared me for my destiny. You've prepared me for my destiny. So it's like either I got what you got or I can use what you gave. You know what I'm saying? But at every point, I'm blessed. That's a dope spot to be able to move with. And in that day, you're only excited for what may come. The same thing that was scaring you, now you're excited. Yeah. Because either I go back on tour to what I already know, or the same good guy that gave me the opportunity that I didn't think I was going to get for the thing that I'm scared about now. Why couldn't he also take me somewhere else to do something else that I didn't know that I was going to have the opportunity to do that either? So now, versus me being scared, am I going to go back out on the same opportunity? In that day, when you only think about the moment that God has you, you know you're qualified and you just got done being, uh, 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 you being used in your purpose, so you actually are now double qualified. We will, some, when, you, when we're in the a, in a wrong place of thinking, we use that same opportunity to get nervous or to start talking about what's coming next or what, what, what if. But that same opportunity, looking at it in the right mind, thinking about where God has you today, you end up saying, I, am, I have double portion because I already know I got somebody that loves me, which is Sarah. But now I have an opportunity for the rest of the world who's waiting to meet me to find out because I won't be just tied up with Sarah. So for God to know that you're prepared in your heart, because I don't want to upset you, Kayla, if I tell you that I actually have somewhere else to take you, but you only think that Sarah is where you need to be, then you're not going to be ready in the season where I'm moving you. So I need to make sure that you're okay with wherever I want to take you, even if it means staying at home. You have to be okay with wherever he wants you, not just with the things that you've been asking for, because the things in your the heart, the things in, that you desire, yes, we want those, but we don't know the things that we need. So, in the same times that we're wanting the desire, God wants us to have the foundation. So, if you're missing foundation, only wanting what you desire, then it's okay for God to pump the brakes and say, "We'll get back to desire. I need to take you back to foundation building." Because you're missing something, like you just said. You're missing something for the next level. So, since we don't know this entire training regiment, it's hard to complain at your training. So, as you can see, during our road trip from L.A. to Dallas, we had time to sit, reflect, and share valuable perspective regarding our faith. As much as I despise road trips, this trip wasn't half bad. So for all y'all that don't know, we're in Texas and all of the Naylor men are under one roof, okay? Yeah. The daddy, all right, Tony, his older brother DJ, and AJ. And there are two things that I need you to know about Naylor men, since this is called the Naylor way. <laughs> Number one, they love to talk and they have an opinion that needs to be heard. That's true. And they won't stop until you hear. Number two, they're competitive. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. In the good words of Bishop T.D. Jakes. <laughs> because if you talking about anything, it's a competition between the neighbors. Okay? It exceeds from the granddaddy all the way down and look, to my son. Like, hey, you ran track, he's like a little pit bull. I did. As soon as somebody <laughs> do something and he know that he can do it, he wants to show you how he can beat you. Because he wants to challenge we everybody. Didn't know everybody growing up. This so young man is a track and field runner, like yeah, he went to college for. Yeah, and here he go. Yeah. He ain't ran nowhere. Where you done ran? Down in the ground. To the, the store. To the store. Okay. I ain't ran the no teddy ground. bear truck. That's the last Ooh, time he ran. Okay. Last time. <laughs> Damn, you are going hard for somebody that. 
That was the last time you were here. I'm not competing with running. Here okay? you go again. I'm with this dude for you, 20 years, and me. he's teaching me that, me that it doesn't matter the size, it doesn't you, matter the age. You blame that on me. Huh? You go for it. You blame that You don't on me. let nobody beat you, girl. So it don't matter, I learned the, si it from don't matter you. the size or the age. That's what you told me. It you taught me that. Do you remember when you in Atlanta? and you're running in the middle of the street, you don't even know these kids, okay? It's kids racing, and because he was driving by and saw kids racing, he like, hey, y'all can't beat me. Why are you talking to 12 year olds racing matter. in the street? Y'all can't matter. beat me. Stop they said, get on out, old man. What do you oh, do? Oh, man. Pull that car over, okay? Take yeah. them shoes off. And smoke me some kids that oh, day. Oh my God. I did, I did. So competitive is just the nailer way. That's one of them. To be a nailer, you better be competitive. It's not the same. No, no, no. The first year's race was already done. <laughs> hey, and then, hey, a nigga did that. Hey, we Both recorded it. I recorded a race on Facebook, and, and Nate Brown said, No, I leaned in. I said, Nigga, I was turning around. He said, I won because I leaned. I was recording. I said, But if you're leaning when I'm resting, then that means you lost. It's like the lean don't add, don't mean nothing. Nah, so, like, two years. Hustle, come here. We didn't go, we didn't do you this last year. year. Two years ago. You raced somebody two oh years ago? Yeah. What? What? Oh my. Oh, I'm sorry. Wow. I read it my 65th oh, birthday and they was talking about grandpa. You know what I mean? I said, you guys don't even understand. These are little. Oh, he so it ain't gonna stop. Wow. It ain't gonna stop. Wow, okay. 65 but years old, and you racing. I motivated not to race somebody. It was a 14 and 50 dad. Because you know why? They get up there and talking all that yet. And the guy called it off. And uh, when they said go, I was gone. They <laughs> gone. <laughs> and they covered up and they booted on. <laughs> but what you got? Like thirty? You probably <laughs> picked a thirty-yard game. Oh, they found about forty yards. <laughs> 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 and he's able to. Dude, without popping the knees. Yeah, for real. I went first. I got like jump. Like, jump. Nah, me, man. You know you know think, race, but, so yeah. the next, we played yeah. basketball and all that stuff afterwards. So the next day was Sunday in church. All of the guys that was out there playing ball, they just cramped up. I walked in there. I felt no pain. <laughs> Nothing. I'm saying. It was freaky, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so then, that was like, it was Saturday morning, so Sunday morning, no pain. Man, Monday morning. <laughs> <laughs> so I couldn't even get out of bed. It's like, I crawled out, I had to do a push up again. <laughs> I heard for about four weeks. <laughs> 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 I said, that extends across the board when it comes to you okay, so and being competitive. You know, we can look. There we go but again. But you wasn't track and field. Here we go again. Basketball. Yeah. You didn't play professionally. Okay. Why do you need Video to play? Video games. So dang, first of all, I didn't Com know that you I didn't know that you had to play professional to be competitive. I guess you I don't. just missed the no, Because you don't. I've seen my wife <laughs> dance against twelve year olds when she was like thirty. And she was battling like stump the yard meets you got served. And I'm like, this kid is gonna be traumatized no. for the rest of his life. It's cause I'm no, no, you it's know, hey, for you video. guys, for you guys that are cameramen and you're like shooting a music video or something, and you know how when you got the Sorry. when you got the camera and you make the camera shake and you be like, ooh, that's a nice effect. She did it with her feet and she we stumped. Were on a and, deck. The, and the kid was we like were on this. A deck. Like she stumped and it's like it she sent like a shockwave to the kid. The kid was like, look, look, look. I was like, how did she do that? It was, she didn't care about age or anything. So we talking about competitive. This is the one. <laughs> Next episode, we're going to be in the same place. <laughs> we'll get back to Inglewood when they unlock the doors. <laughs> and um, they don't lock down for a minute. They don't lock down for a minute. So, we're going to enjoy. We're not okay. rushing. We're not rushing. So the Naylor way will be in Dallas until further notice. You hey. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. See y'all next week.